BMI Hub is accepting new songs for their 2023 Christmas compilation. To find out how to submit your song, go to www.gmihub.ca today. GMI Hub, Family Christmas, Volume 4. Now is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. GMI Hub Online. I'm so glad you're able to join us today. I hope you had a great weekend. Well, today we are going to be talking about capturing your story in your song. It's out of a songwriting theme, but capturing your story in your song. I'm excited about the guest that we have tonight, but before we do, I want to introduce my wonderful co-host, Dale Borland. Dale. Well, hello. Welcome to the show. GMI Hub Online is here. Hey, I want to just let you know about what we're up to. GMIHub.ca, we have a website, and you can go find out more about us. Just go there, and if you look at all the stuff we have available for you to check out, you will also uh, just join our, our, our little email there, and we'll be able to send you a hub happening. Once a month, we send a little letter out telling you about what's going on, and, uh, and lots, lots of other things on the website to look at, like we have our, our compilation CD, which is Submissions for Christmas. If you're a songwriter or an artist who has a song that you haven't yet produced or hadn't released, sorry, for Christmas, we would love to make that part of our compilation. This is our fourth project, so if you want to check, check out what we had before, go to gmihub.bandcamp.com, and you can find out all those artists' fantastic songs, and you could be on the next project. Well, let's get back to the GMI Hub online. This tonight, it's, 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 we're, we're here on YouTube and we're on Facebook, but we're on YouTube. We want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell, and that way you'll know the next time we upload a video and engage with us. If you could, just make a comment in, in, the, uh, in the text there or comment area there. We'd love to hear from you guys. Even after this video goes up and it's going to be on YouTube, we'll be able to uh, type back and forth. And I'd love to hear from you guys. I really would. And Keep that connection with you. So we're going to talk about an incredible story of, uh, of, of, of how to write songs about stories. It's just, that's a story in itself. That sounds like a song. You can write a song about a story, about a song. Story. Sorry, I'm getting lost in my story. Let's talk <laughs> about stories and songs. I have to say, Dale, I am so proud of you. You remember to unmute what? your microphone before talking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, boy. very proud of you. Good boy. <laughs> yeah, you Here, here's your picture here. Okay. Just, okay. <laughs> well, oh. it is exciting. I mean, you know, we've talked about, I was thinking about this, and I said, you know, we've had guests on before that have talked about the emotions related to their songs, mm. but we haven't really talked about how to capture your story in your songs. And tonight, um, the guest we have tonight is Rosalie Hovenkamp. She's tuning in from 
South Carolina. I have to ask that. I have to double check that. <laughs> From South Carolina, she's tuning in. And I actually was uh, drawn to her because she wrote a song that uh, I actually saw the video of it and I said, wow, there's got to be a story behind this particular song because there's so much emotion. There's so much of something that's there that tells me she's trying to communicate something. And I know she's written a few other songs. She's been featured in, in um, a particular television program, Southern Gospel television program as well, which I'm going to get her to talk about that a little bit more too. But without further ado, let me introduce to you Rosalie Heavenkamp. Welcome, Rosalie. Hi, thank you for having me. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, it's wonderful <laughs> having you. I'm, I, I'm interested on, in just starting off this question by saying as a songwriter, um, and uh, it's not always easy to put a story into a song uh, because you're trying to communicate maybe a lot of thoughts, ideas, maybe paint pictures with words, and that can sometimes get away on you. Uh, you end up making the song a little bit longer than you intended because you have so much to say. How, how, do, you, um, how do you sit down with an intent to write the story, or do you sit down with the intent to write the story? Or is the story something that just comes out of the what you're trying to say? Well, this story um, was is about 20 years old, and it, mm. it's basically going off of what I went through in my life with my father, um, some mental uh, things uh, with that, and and it was really hard um, dealing with that, and and. The only words that I had was intervene, Jesus, intervene. And and that stuck with me. Like, that's what I would say every day. I, I intervene because I can't do it. Um, mm. And and I knew there was a song in it, but I was not ready. <laughs> you know, it, it was just, it was a really tough life uh, that we went through. Um, and so I finally, finally put it down. Um, last year actually i had written it in a notebook i had start i actually found the notebook uh last month actually and i was just what i do is um i'll just jot down random thoughts um and then i'll co um, i hope to come back to it later and uh i wanted to come back to this song but i, I ended up writing it totally different than what i thought it was because i found it and i'm like oh wow there's another song in this original version, so there'll be another uh, a song out of that. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, you know, just you do have to discipline yourself to just sit down and put your feelings on that paper and sort through it and and deal with what you need to deal with if you have to deal with something if you're trying to get something out. So for me now, this song is written for other people. Because I've already mm. gone through it, you know, years ago, and um, and so I know that there's everyone has their own situations. Um, mine is what it was, and um, I kind of tried to write it to where most people could relate to it without losing what it's original, you yeah. know, what it's yeah. about too. So you okay. mentioned that you mentioned that it was more of a mental. Uh, a mental thing you had to deal with in this in your story so are, are you saying that when you wrote this song you were were you still battling with the I'll call it the mental or emotional consequences of whatever happened in your past at that time when you were writing the song I think honestly I always will though it'll always be there um, it doesn't define me but it is there it's part of my past um, so it was kind of medicating, I guess, you know, to so just write it out and put it out there, you know, if you have no other outlet of, of letting that go. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. It'd be like a therapeutic thing for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So as, as a song writer, though, you've written songs in the past. So um, you approach this song with a different mindset as far as structure or I don't know, the, the hook, that kind of mindset, how, how did you approach it? I just, um, I just sat down at the piano and just started singing whatever came to my heart. And then I wrote it down or actually 
I, uh, I pulled out my camera and I just started videotaping it. <laughs> and then, mm-hmm. uh, and then I, you know, and I sorted through it after that, but mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So, so let's, we're going to see let's... a video then. <laughs> right. <laughs> the video, the video, it came to me. I knew what I wanted to show. Um, the phone situation is, uh, my, my family, my sister and I, and my mom, we would get phone calls all night long, all day long. And it was like mental torture. <laughs> and it was like, oh, I got to listen to this. If I don't listen to it, I'm going to get it in person. So I'm going to listen to it. Um, that type of thing. But um, so that's the phone that you'll see. Um, and, the, and the man that you see that kind of represents a, a little bit of what I went through with that too. But mm-hmm. Okay, so just just because it's not clear for everybody, are you open or would you be comfortable sharing us a little bit more just to give a clearer picture of of your story? Like, who is Rosalie and what is that story that's behind the songs that you write? Are you comfortable sharing that a little bit? Sure. Well, um, I, I am actually a music minister. I've been in the music ministry since I was 10 years old. I uh, joined the choir with my mom. And 12 years old, I was playing the clarinet. 13 years old, I was playing the organ and leading a, uh, the youth choir. Or we, we had a, a youth service on Sunday nights that I, I did that. And, uh, and then when I was a bit older, 21 years old, I, I moved on to the Daytona Beach Drive-In Church, and uh, and I stayed there for 13 years. Uh, I learned a lot of my gospel music there that I've um, that I've learned throughout the years. Um, they were good to me, and then I moved to South Carolina, and I, I just always wanted to be involved in in church ministry, music ministry, wherever it is. Right now, I'm a I'm uh, doing worship leading at Trinity United Methodist Church in Anderson, and I'm, I'm really enjoying that. We have a band. Awesome. It's, it's great, yeah. Awesome. So awesome. That, that's basically been my life is, is music ministry. That's what brings me wow. joy. <laughs> ah, and are you still playing the clarinet and all those other instruments? Or oh, no. Playing the piano? No. no. <laughs> the piano, yeah. I'll, I'll hop on the organ at the church every now and then, just you know, for nostalgia, <laughs> and I love it, you know, so. <laughs> and I'll sing in the choir when it's needed, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Mm. So who were your major influences in music? Like, who encouraged you along the way? Um. It would have been my my original uh, people that encouraged me would have been uh, over at Sacred Heart uh, Church in New Smyrna Beach. Um, it was her name was Catherine Krasminski. She was actually she's actually a songwriter, and so I I was really inspired by her. I actually based my senior project was on songwriting, and I interviewed her, and I wrote a song with that, and, and went through that whole copyright process and everything. So that would have been like my very first experience with songwriting. Uh, it was her. It was Ellen Graff. She played the piano, and Patricia Gal- Galbraith was the um, choir director, and Casey uh, Carol Casey played the guitar. It was just all of them, uh, I wanted to be like them, <laughs> you know. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Well, if they are watching, here's the product. <laughs> here's the product <laughs> of your ministry yes. right here. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, so let, let me so, ask if I, can I, sorry. Go, go ahead, ahead Cheryl. Okay, go ahead. No, I was just going to no, ask a different you're, question. You're on, you're on the same way. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All then. right. So, um, <clears throat> Rock, paper, scissors, Dale. <laughs> uh, um, actually, I was just going to ask, um, your first song that you wrote, was it the Intervene song that I heard, or was it a different song? The first song there? that I wrote that, uh, well, um, I mean, the first song I wrote would have been in high school, but that was just, that was just silly. Um, but the first... Um, the first song that I wrote would have been in a co-write uh, back in 2020. I joined a uh, Christian writing group and and went with that and got in touch with some songwriters. And we wrote uh, Throughout Eternity was the first song I wrote. And that was with Leslie McGee and uh, Jonathan, John, ah, 
I'm sorry, Curtis Turner. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah. did I send that to you? It was uh, throughout eternity. I actually made the music video for that too. Oh, um, I, I probably didn't send that it to you. I, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, that was the first one. And then the second one was Alleluia Always, yeah, which I wrote with Matt Crossan and uh, uh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Garrett Deering. <laughs> awesome. So, awesome. Yes. So, so take note, lots of collabs going on. Okay, Dale, pose your yes. questions. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, that was interesting because you started talking about collabs. My brain went somewhere else. But okay, back to my first uh, idea was when we're talking about songwriting, and when it comes to telling stories, there's a certain um, uh, kind of a probably a philosophy that a storyteller would probably take. Uh, but uh, like I was thinking about a book, you're writing a story, even a short form book or story, or or um, short story, you'd have a kind of introducing character type of idea, storyline. And having it come to a big finale, or having some sort of, you know, thing happening in the song that would allow for people to take that journey. So the mm -hmm. the the process of writing a song um, is much smaller and more concise than that. So there's there's a lot of information that needs to be um, given in that small amount of time. So you're you must. I don't know about you, but I find myself when I'm writing a song. I do many iterations of the same line to condense and to rechange, mm -hmm. and you know. So, how, how, what was that? What was the process like for you when you when you you know you're sitting down and you start singing the words and it's coming to mind as you're reading through your writings? What was the process like for you? Well, I knew that I needed to start it out with my feeling that I I was alone, and how I was feeling, afraid, and scared, and so I I went off of that. But then, um, but then I didn't want to leave it in this down uh, spot. But I had to build it. This is this is how it started. But then, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was asking God to intervene, and and it took me some time to realize that I had to go through what I went through because He was forming me into what I was becoming. And and then, uh, you know, I'm not alone now you know because i know mm -hmm. that you're there but i was never alone but it's just when you're going through that you're you're alone in your in your feelings you know i mean you have support but you still have that feeling of uh of loneliness mm -hmm. uh from just what you're going through but um and then and then the last verse for me i wanted to touch on forgiveness because mm -hmm. There was a song that I had to sing at the drive-in church, and it was seven times 70. I don't know if you've heard that one. It's this oh. Seven times 70, I had to forgive. I could not sing that song because I was going mm. through that at that time. That was the yeah. one time in my life I could not sing a song. Uh, it was too personal. But um, so I kind of feel, felt like, well, I do need to... For, I, I do forgive and I need to, to touch on that. So, so that's where that right. came in. So. Really good. That's awesome. Because that, the truth is, you know, once you have forgiven someone, that's no longer your problem, right? You, right. You, 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 it starts a healing process for you. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Now, back to the, the other thought was when we talk about co collaboration, when it comes to a song like that, um, it's probably next to impossible to collab but oh yeah maybe arrangement maybe arrangement would be something you could collab on or maybe a production and post you know type of that type of stuff there's an opportunity there for collab when it comes to producing the song um so i don't know how much that what was involvement you had in that process um, this song, Intervene, I, I wrote by myself as far as the words and and the melody. Um, then I, what I did was I, I played it on the piano and I sent it to my producer, Joel Rose. And he could tell, I mean, he did a fabulous job to me what, what I was feeling in my uh, playing. He brought it to life, basically. So so he definitely had uh, a lot to do with with that uh, emotional music part in that song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's yeah, reminding me of, of our mm -hmm. other friend Rhonda. Similar experience, different person though. Um, had a very negative experience, like an, I'll call it an abusive experience, and mm -hmm. she too had to go through this healing process. And she wrote a song about it, and produced the song. Had you know, God put her with a, a wonderful producer who was able to help her to express that. Even did a video with it and song's been I think she's she's still reaping the benefits of that particular song oh, wow. and still sharing that still sharing that because the the bottom line is um, when going through a tough time and, and going through something that's as harsh as being either abused physically or abused mentally or emotionally whatever the case may be um, when we're when we as songwriters are able to to sing about it and we added that forgiveness portion. Uh, it, it allows other people who can relate to that to sit there and go, okay, yeah, this is what I need to do too. Because there's, as mm -hmm. you say, sometimes you feel alone in what you're going through, but you're not alone. There's at least 10 other people that are going through the exact same thing as you, right? Different, yeah. people, different <laughs> location, but at least 10 people are going through it. Mm -hmm. So... So yeah, it's 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 important. Now, you mentioned that you, you've also been a worship leader all your life now, uh, or most of your life, or involved mm -hmm. in the worship of most of your life in your church. Has that been a source of healing and songwriting as well for you? Has that had a strong influence in how you choose to communicate in your songs? Oh, absolutely. It, it... It held me together through those hard times for sure, because um, it was it was my escape. You know, I was having, I was most likely having a bad day every day for those years. Um, but every Tuesday night, I knew I was going to have some joy <laughs> tonight. Yeah, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to bring them a song and teach it to them. We're going to sing and we're going to praise the Lord and and then and do God's work. And, Good. That's awesome. That's good. And did anyone at that time knew that you were going through struggles or you just said, I'm just going to go in and this is what we're going to do? <laughs> yeah. I tried to hide it for the most part. Uh, my pastor right. knew a little bit, right. you know, um, just, you know, if I was ever upset, that's why. Or, but I don't think too many people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so being you, a worship uh, leader, go ahead, Dale. Yeah, so again, being the worship leader, that's that's must be um the, the, i was going my my friend a uh, friend of mine tony he wrote a song called stay and it just simply means that that one thing in his life that's not moving uh, and that's the relationship with god with god with him and mm -hmm. god's love for him and i would think that would be the opportunity for your stay was in inhabiting that that worship time with the lord and and and, and he was there and and through you praise and worship and so but the thing is not only did that take you on a spiritual journey but it also took you on a musical journey i'm sure that would have been uh the place where you would, you you did a lot of your musical growing was through that worship music so um mm -hmm. cheryl was talking about earlier how that would be something that would maybe have influence on your current uh style uh, of writing perhaps, or the things that you um, lean to whenever you sit down to write a song. Um, so uh, the song that, that you're talking about tonight, we're talking, just focusing on that story. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the idea of, it was more of a prayer, would it be? That you're saying, yes. I'm praying that God would intervene. Yeah, so I'm looking at that, it still has that um, same kind of, to me, that stay where you're like, it's, it's another, God-focused, Christ-centered um, heart place that you have where you find your music. And it's very, very uh, more obvious uh, to others than to you that that's your your journey has been in the church and it's still it's still there because you're still focused on God whenever you're using, you're writing songs regardless of the perspective it's from. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Are you still... In this particular song... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> oh, uh, this particular song, like, you know, you're supposed to have like a verse, chorus, verse, chorus. I did not go off of any kind of, you know, I just did my own thing. <laughs> like, so it's like, oh, that's weird. You have a, 
I don't know if it was like a bridge and then a verse or, you know, just the way I did it. But um, I don't know. To me, it worked because it's it was just how I was feeling. So I didn't. Well, the great thing about songwriting, the there's no rules. <laughs> yeah, there's no yeah. rules, really. I mean, it, when it comes to songwriting, people talk about why well, you do it. intro and the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus, you know, OK, that may be a mathematical mm -hmm. equation for a song, but truly there is no real rules. Uh, you, you, yeah. you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, I am um, in the process of writing more uh, songs. Um, a lot of times what I find what I myself doing is I'll go on Facebook and I'll type out a whole thing and I'll be like, there's a song in that copy, paste, and send it to myself mm -hmm. and delete. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I do a lot of, <laughs> you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Inspiration by Facebook. Love it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, like, okay, I've got to, I got to say this somewhere, but no, I'm not going to post it. I'm going to, right. I'm going to well, text message it to myself I, and then I'll come back. I to can it. relate to that. That's kind of like Cheryl, Cheryl and I can do the same thing. We use this thing here. And we, we mm -hmm. la, 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 sing a words, blah, blah. And then we listen to it back and write, write it down because it's like, you never, yeah. you never really have a piece of paper on hand when, when you really need it, you're driving or whatever. So yeah, yes. it's the same type of things. And you listen to it later in a different mindset, you go, whoa, what was I thinking? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> a lot of times at three o'clock in the morning, I'll, I'll, I'll wake up the worst. in the morning. I'll be like, oh, this is good. And I'll type it, yes. I'll write it out to myself. And then I'll, I'll wake up more. I'm like, what was this? <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. This is a really cool story about a buddy of mine, Dwayne Jackson. He's an amazing artist. He's a great singer and all that. Anyways, he tells me a story whenever we're younger, he tells me a story. He says, I have, you know, those old cassette tapes you know, with the record button, like the click, click buttons, like one of those rectangle boxes thing, cassette tape. And anyway, he used to use that for you know, playing up ideas and stuff. So one night he was having this song in his head and it was the best sounding song ever. So he puts the record and he's like, let us go to bed and bed. And over the lyrics are, he's yeah, you know, and he turns, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, that's going to be amazing. I can't wait to hear it. So he gets up the next morning, pushes play. <laughs> It's, he was asleep when he was doing it. It was so. We, we, I think every every songwriter yes. who does uh, that has that same journey where they go, "Yeah, that song's not going to do anything," you know. And and it's like I had to learn to wake myself up because I will write the most awesome thing in my sleep. So I think anyway, and I'll be like in my sleep, I'll be like, okay, I'm writing this down. So I'm not going to forget it. I'm writing it down, but no, I'm dreaming that I'm writing it down. <laughs> so you're still asleep. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> and with me, it's just, I need to use the phone in order to remember the tune. Cause I know that. I sing it enough times thinking, oh, I'll remember, I'll remember, I'll remember. And then something else happens and some other song is playing and some other event is happening. I go, what was that song again? Dang, I forgot yeah. it. It was so good. <laughs> so the, lyrics, the lyrics aren't as important as the melody for you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yes. that's true. <laughs> you lose the melody, you go, ah, there goes the song. Yeah. Exactly. But it sounds like it was a... Uh, you're more of a lyrics person. Like you get the lyrics mm. and you go, oh, I like it. Let's put it aside before, even before you get a tune, right? Yes, yes. And then sometimes mm. I'll, I'll have a, a tune and I'll just hum it and I'll record myself humming it. Um, but most of the time it, it's words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have new yeah, music coming out. What about, are you thinking of new music coming out? Out of curiosity. I actually have a song coming out this Friday. It's called His Open Hands. It was written by Mike Owens. And I'm sorry, my computer keeps moving. <laughs> but yeah, that's coming out on Friday. Um, and then I have another song that I'm, I'm coming out with, uh, my version of Goodness of God. That'll come out in July, probably. Um, awesome. Awesome. So get that on Spotify. Let's get that on yes, Spotify. and and I'm actually going to collaborate with with Mike Owens on a on a Christmas song that he's written. So 
gonna um, really? gonna relook at that. And, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is, this is a good time to interject, you know, because if you are out there at home and you are just like our friend here who has a Christmas song that you are working on, and you want to put it on a project that'll help push your music out there, give us a uh, consideration. The GMI Hub is putting together a Christmas compilation uh, project, and we have three prior projects. It's called Family Christmas, and Family Christmas Volume 1, 2, and 3 are already done, but vol Volume 4 is on its way. And by the 18th of, of August, we want you to have all your submissions in so we can get this project put together. And if you've got a song that is, you've finished and it's not been produced or it's never been released before, we'd like to invite you to be part of this project. We will help you with some of the marketing, we'll help you with some of the, we'll talk about the song, we'll push it and we'll help you guys just to, to do what, what stuff that you can do and we'll help get the song out there. So, you know, go to gmihub.ca, go to Family Christmas, click on there and submit your song and we would love you move your song forward for this Christmas season. Good segue. There you yes. go, <laughs> perfect. So there's a hint, Rosalie. <laughs> now is the yes. time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. GMI Hub is accepting new songs for their 2023 Christmas compilation. To find out how to submit your song, go to www.gmihub.ca today. GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. And we're back. So if you want to be in, you want to get creative, start writing, you've seen the commercials. We look forward to receiving your Christmas songs. Okay. So we have been talking to Rosalie, who has been sharing, uh, not in great detail, but kind of hinted about the story behind her song, Intervene. The one song that she has written that really is an expression of, of prayer during a very difficult time in her life. And I am hoping that as you are watching this, if you are a person that's going through a difficult time right now, that uh, you would feel encouraged, especially if you are a songwriter, that you are able you can use music to help express how you are feeling. Me, God already knows how you are feeling, but it's a way of expressing how you're feeling and know that you are not alone. Um, as Rosalie said, uh, she felt like she was alone a lot of the times with what she was going through. And uh, unfortunately with a family member and a family member that she would have normally looked up to. And she felt alone. She felt like she had to keep this all to herself. But then along the way, with the help of other people, she was able to express her feelings through her song and through her video. And I think there's a number of people that have been watching it and have been feeling like, oh, someone else understands exactly how I feel. If you are going through that, know that you are not alone. You are not. There are probably at least 10 other people that are going through the same thing. So please, please, please do not feel like you have to stay alone. Connect yourselves with people that can support you and help you. I know Rosalie connected with people like worship leaders and musicians that were able to come alongside her and help her and encourage her in her musical talent. And I trust and hope that you can do that too. And if you can't, then connect with us. Connect with GMI Hub. We are here to try and help as best as we can. And we can help uh, help you with pushing your song forward. We can help celebrate with you when you do have a song going forward. We can help connect you with people that can help you move along forward as well in any aspect of your life. So feel free to give us a call or drop us mm -hmm. a line at gmihub.ca. I feel like we're doing a lot of commercials. Let's get back to Rosalie here. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
No, I do have to say I wasn't really completely alone. I did have a, I did have support. I have a, a wonderful husband who was there with me through the whole thing. And, and my mom and my sister, we, we had each other. But as far as outside people, we, we didn't, we didn't talk about ah, it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's not like easy said... to talk about things like that, though, you know, with people all mm -hmm. the time. Cause, uh, you know, yeah, no. <laughs> you know it's, it's you you want to you want to have i don't know how to explain it but the, you know there's certain people you you, you, you want to be around them because they lift you up and you don't want to be that person that brings everybody down when you're around them you know because it's yes. i get that but it, there's but there's also the the aspect of um of having someone preferably uh traveling with you on that journey and and that's that i think that's what cheryl was touching on there's 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 opportunities for 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 others to to share the pain if that's a way to say it but, but also help you be encouraged and blessed through the pain um so it's not always an easy thing i get that but you know whenever you're you're um able to write a song and to have that outlet it's it's a kind of a release and it's also a way of uh, helping you to uh to get your thoughts down and get your feelings out absolutely yeah. rosalie what would you share with people that are listening right now or watching right now that uh, may be going through a tough time. They may not have music as an outlet, but what would you mm -hmm. share with them as a word of encouragement if they were going through something similar to what you've been through? Um, find someone that you can talk to. Um, it, it does help at least to have a friend. And I've even just discovered on Snapchat that they have the AI and you could just, it's not a real person. You could just say what you want to say and you get a response. <laughs> you know, I mean, if wow. you have something, let's, you know, <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> if you feel like, you know, I mean, there's that. If, if you just have to say something and, and just get a right, response right. from somebody and not be judged or whatever, uh, there's that, but no, um, but yeah, definitely pray over it. Um, and God will lead you through it. Well, mm -hmm. beautiful. Indeed. Beautiful. And if they do have a musical background and they do have the ability to song write, any advice related to that? Or tips? Yeah, just, just, just write it down, what you're feeling in that moment. Um, you know, cause sometimes when you, when you get really raw and deep in that's, that's where your best stuff can come from is, uh, mm -hmm. when you're going into, mm -hmm. into that moment, really. Yeah. Your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that escape. It might, it must be, <laughs> yeah, it, the, the hard thing is probably the emotion uh, of writing a song like that can sometimes overwhelm, and so it's it's uh, it's a bit hard sometimes to get through the song because you're like, <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just just write it down on a uh, you know, I like I was saying, I found a notebook and I've got one line on. I was like, I was like, what is this? I've got one line on every page. I just wrote one line every day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then and then when you're ready, then you you come back to it. But um, but try not yeah. to wait too long. Like yeah. mine was too long. <laughs> but, <laughs> Twenty years of yeah, but for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know it's perfect timing for for God because that yes. if that song being released at this particular time was for some reason. So you know, yes, it's just to rest in rest in that fact. Yeah. If you want to, if if um. For our viewers that are watching right now, if you wanted to listen to Rosalie's song, she does have her songs on her website, which is rosaliechristianmusic.com. Did I say that right, Rosalie? I hope I did. Yes. <laughs> and yes. also on, and that is connected to her YouTube channel, uh, Rosalie Oven Camp, I believe is what it's under. And you will see the songs that are there. And, um, She's also been on another little program too, which I guess she just gets, it's like a Southern gospel type of program where she gets to sing a few songs and sing a few hymns as well. Um, and you'll get to see that as well, right? I, you've been there just a few yes. times? Or? Um, I, I was there for um, all of season one and most of season two. I, I missed a couple uh, shows because I was in a, another songwriting conference that day. Um, and uh, a few of us are actually branching off and doing touring now. We're, we're the Redback Rewind uh, tour. Cool. So, yeah. Oh, wow. So and when does that? that now. 
Oh wow! Now, um, yeah, we we have uh, we're booked um, in September out in Kentucky, and we're going to the Al- Alabama Gospel Roots show in October, and we're going to be filming here in uh, Greenville at the television station here next month too. So yeah, it's it's going to be something. So lots. Are of you going to wear a cowboy hat? Uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> well, it sounds like it'll be fun. Will you have opportunity to Thank sing you. your original music, or will it literally just be Southern gospel, sing the hymns and? Oh, no, we're gonna. Well, as far as our tour, we're gonna bring out our own individuality to it, along with some with the old hymns. So. Ah, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, definitely got to look out for that. So, um, any other questions, Dale? Any thoughts? Uh, I, I, I was like, I like to ask the very last question is when all the things we've said, everything that's been said, if someone came to you and said to you, you know, I, I've always wanted to write a song like that, um, but I don't know how to start. I don't know how to begin to write that song. So what would you, what would you say to them to say, you know, if you want to write a good story song, or if you want to write a song about a story in your life, here's how, what I would do. How would you speak to them? Yeah. Um, basically, what I've been saying is just just start writing it down, and and then you know, you sort through it as you're going through it. Like, oh well, I want to touch base on this, and and you know, um, make make like a a graph or something, and um, what what it is that you want to say. What what is your goal in your song? What are you wanting mm-hmm. uh, the outcome to be? Right. It sounds like to me that your song in particular what didn't really fall into a, uh, like you were saying earlier, it did, didn't have a verse chorus, verse chorus bridge. Yeah. So I think that that would probably be something that uh, that you might want to say to them as well. He said it doesn't have to be a typical scenario. Right. It's your song, so yeah. do with it what you yeah. you know how how you're feeling exactly. it. Don't let someone say, "Oh, you should do this, you should do that." No, this is how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. This this is what I want it to be like, and and, and stick mm-hmm. with how you're feeling. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I like that. Good advice. Do you believe that every song that is written, that may be just like an outlet of emotion or expression do you believe that all those songs um there are songs that that should be just kept as their what's the word of it? Meta- medicine for ourselves or do you believe they are their songs that should be shared just i'm just curious about that i mean i guess it depends um i, I think that so I, I do believe that songs do need to be shared um, because there's so many different situations. Every, th- every situation is unique um, and you never know if your situation might be similar to someone else who needs that song in that time. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You just never I agree. Know. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Well, Rosalie, Thank you so much for being with us yeah. and sharing your story, sharing the story behind the song Intervene. I know we didn't play the song. It is available on YouTube um, and on her website or the link. It can be on her website, which is rosaliechristianmusic.com. And uh, if you hear the song and you watch the video, I should have asked, were you the person in the video as well or no? Were you in that video? No, was no, that I else? wasn't. Oh. No, that's wow. somebody else. <laughs> that somebody else looks yeah. a lot like you. But yes, yeah, so <laughs> the, the video um, is very expressive of what, um, what Rosalie was basically going through at that given point in time. Basically, mm. the trust of a daughter to a father and yet that trust being uh, broken. So have a look at that video and uh, check out her music. And again, check out gmihub.ca if you want to know more about us. If you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, ring the bell for the next time you want to be the first to know when we're showing a a program. If you're on Facebook, like us and definitely put some comments down. We want to know how we're doing, if we're meeting your needs. And if you want to see something from us, 
definitely give, drop us a line either on Facebook or contact us on gmihub.ca. We'd love to hear from you. But um, right now we're going to let you go and we hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time right here on GMI Hub as next week we talk about navigating the sacred and the secular. I for now. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Now is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. GMI Hub is accepting new songs for their 2023 Christmas compilation. To find out how to submit your song, go to www.gmihub.ca today. GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4.